Okay, in this session we're going to look at some of the advanced setup features with flat files. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, go over and uh, go to the admin section and look at the, our connections. And we're going to prepare to add a flat file, but because we're going to look at some of the advanced features, we'll need to be in advanced mode. So click on the advanced mode uh, checkbox on the first uh, page of the wizard. And for the first connection that we're going to make, I'm going to call it uh, ADV flat file source and I'm going to choose our usual selection here, the flat file driver and this is a delimited file and we don't have to change the driver because we're using the standard driver uh, and the uh, location of these files is going to be in the usual place for our uh, demo box and the file that we're going to work with is, in this case, a DAT file. And now let me uh, bring up a sample of the file so that uh, you can just get a view of what uh, is interesting about it. So first of all, one of the things that you can see that's interesting is that the file has an unusual delimiter in it. You can see that we're using the double ampersand as the delimiter for this file, so that's one thing that's unusual. Another thing that's unusual is that the file has some date columns in it uh, and uh, those date columns are non-standard date columns. They're something that we don't handle out of the box in terms of formatting dates and understanding dates, so we'll have to deal with that. The other thing that we uh, also can notice about this is that uh, we don't have any headers in this file. So we'll have to combine all of those pieces of information in our connection in order to properly process this file. Okay, in order to deal with the delimiter, that's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is check that we're going to use uh, the another uh, value for the delimiter and put in our delimiter. And we can put in any multi-character delimiter that we want to here, and Chris should, should be able to handle that. Now, in terms of the headers, we've mentioned that uh, our, uh, our file does not have a header line in it. Uh, and we could ask to simply uh, generate headers. Those would be very simple, uninformative headers, column one, column two, and so forth. But we have a much more interesting option here. We can provide our own headers, and uh, we can provide them here on the connection, and those headers will be able to be used in the SQL. So I've got a file here that I'm going to get the headers out of. And I'm just going to copy them and paste them here. As you can see from these headers uh, that I've put into uh, the provide header line uh, edit box, there are six columns in the file. And now our final choice uh, is to, uh, to deal with uh, the different kinds of data types that we're going to uh, enter. And uh, I've got a listing of data types that I'm going to copy in here as well. And so let me get our data types. And as you can see here, we've got six data types for each of the six columns. So uh, the thing I'll point out right here is that we're using the date time type for the two uh, columns that contain date time uh, information. And as I mentioned, uh, we uh, don't have the appropriate formatting in here for uh, our date time column. So let's add that in. Let's go back to our sample data. And what I'm going to do is just copy this date time and add it in here, followed by a pipe. And I'm going to convert each of the digits and symbols in this date time to the corresponding formatting symbol. These are from the, uh, these formatting symbols are from the simple date format class of Java.
and that's all we need to do. We're going to set up a connection for our target file now, which as you can see is quite similar but not identical to the source file. It's got uh, the same date format for the, the datetime columns. Uh, however, it uses a standard delimiter, the comma, uh, and uh, again, it uh, does not have any uh, headers in it. So we'll set up our connection uh, based on those characteristics. Now, because these two connections are so similar, I'm just going to make a copy of our first connection. and save it. And now I'm just going to edit it. Now we're ready to write some queries using our new uh, connection, so let's go in and do that. Okay, and there we are. Let's take a look at our data. And clearly our query pair has been processed uh, in the way we expected. Uh, that is to say, uh, we got uh, uh, the columns all back, uh, the work with the, uh, the processing with the unusual delimiter that ampersand ampersand clearly is correct, uh, as is the uh, processing with the regular delimiter, the comma. Uh, and we can also see here that our headers are all here. So we've got column names that we imposed on the connection level that are available for us to enhance our SQL with. Now one thing that we might see here is that when we look at our date information, uh, the date information is there, but it doesn't look like our, uh, our input files have it because all of those uh, additional uh, uh, decimal places uh, at the end of the dates are missing, and that's because query search processed this based on some assumptions about what date fields look like that don't apply. Okay, so let's see if we can't enhance our example here with some additional SQL syntax that will make things look a little bit more like uh, we want them to. So I'm just going to copy this query. I'm going to paste it. Going to open it up, change its name, and save that. And now let's go over to the query and put some more uh, syntax into here. First thing I'm going to do is add in column names because we've got column names that we can use. So let's give that a try before we go on to anything else. And now let's do something with those date columns, or those date time columns, I should say, that will make them appear in a way that is more reflective of the date. And what I'm going to do is use a format date time call, where we uh, tell the system that uh, the column should be formatted with, with a specific format. And that, of course, is going to be our special format. 
and the system will return that to us uh, as a formatted date and ideally we should be able to see all of our digits in the date there. Let me do that for this uh, column as well as the first column. Let's run this and see if we get the expected result. And now we can look at the results. And we can see our data came back. Dates come back now as clubs because uh, that's how the format date time returns them. More about that in a second. We can see underneath uh, the club uh, we've got, in fact, the data that we expected. If we go and look at the failures tab, we can see we do have a failure. Let's look at the differences, and we can see that our uh, decimal digits are there, and in fact, they disagree, and that's why we've got a failure. So let's make some additional changes to clean up our query pair. Uh, let's say we don't like those clubs because even though that's how they come back, they're not too convenient to look at. So why don't we cast our result uh, as a var car? And we'll cast both columns. source query and we'll leave the target query as is. Let's give this a run again and uh, the source query of course should uh, now come back uh, as varcars. We'll still get clobs back on the target query but since they're both fundamentally text types query surge will compare them and won't really care that they're uh, different types in essence. Let's see what we get. So now on our source side, we can see we're getting all six of our digits. So we're getting all the, the precise digits. And when we look at the comparison, uh, we'll see that they're both appearing as clubs. That's because Query Surge will upcast the source uh, for purposes of comparison to the target since that column in the comparison has to have a single type associated with it. If we want to uh, be able to get uh, uh, var cars in both source and target and on our failure tab, then we'll have to uh, cast on both sides, source and target. So let's do that. And while we're doing that, let's also clean up our query with some better looking names for our columns. my misspell here and I can do the same thing on the uh, target side. Now if we've got everything lined up well, we can get a clean run of our query pair. And you can see now that we've got uh, nice column names, 
we've got all of our digits on the source side and on the target side. And when we look at our failure tab, uh, we can see uh, all of the data outright that we want to see, both for the failing data as well as for the passing data. And that ends our illustration of advanced flat file techniques.